Well guys, we live in the 21st century, and yes, we have robots that are roaming our house now, from large robots that can purify our homes, to even bigger robots that can go around and telecommunicate. And last, we've got small little hockey puck shaped robots that can go around, vacuum and mop. And these particular models can actually wash the mopping pads. So in this video, we're going to talk about three different models and do a head to head with the Yeti Mop Station, with the Minibot H10, and with the Narwhal T10. And we'll see which model is the best for you. Uh, there's some distinct features and there's not a lot of self-washing mopping robots, but I wanted to do a head-to-head -head video. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the Vinibot H10. Now, this really hasn't changed much from the Vinibot N1, which was the first robot back of the day put out, but you may notice the unique design. Uh, someone in the comments actually thought this was an Instapod. Yes, it kind of looks like one, but you may notice the unique design. It sits fairly tall, but there's a good reason for that. Yes, the mopping pad can actually lift up, so once it detects carpet, it will actually lift up its mopping pad. Now, I'll go ahead and slow this down so you guys can see that in action. It's actually pretty useful, especially when I have high profile carpet. It has no problems getting over it and not mopping my carpets. Okay, let's go and take a look at the Yeti Vac Station, I mean Yeti Mop Station. So Yeti actually made two different models. One can self-empty, the other can self-wash. Alright, so for the Yeti Mop Station, it actually uses camera-based navigation, but the mapping is very similar to the lot of base robot vacuums. And let's go and take a look at how the washing system works. It's actually very similar across the three models. So once you have A selected, all you have to do is just press the play button. Start vacuuming and mopping. So despite the Yeti mop station not having a lot of base navigation, its camera system actually did a pretty good job. Provides all the features that you get with LiDAR, like the live mapping. Also, you can see in that area, it's able to keep within the area, not stray from it. So I'm actually quite impressed with Yeti's uh, navigation. Okay, so let's look at the Nawa T10. You may notice that the robot goes all inside the docking station. This is great, it's not sticking out, so in case you're walking by, you don't actually hit the robot. Also, on the top here, you have a nice OLED display, which I appreciate. And you got two capacitive touch buttons, which have different functions. You can actually create a new map directly on the docking station, which is cool. The other two cannot do that. Like the other ones, you do have a fresh water tank. And you also have a dirty water tank as well. All it takes a step further by adding these little cleaning detergent cloths. So what you do is you just throw them in the fresh water tank and they provide a nice fresh scent and also help with the mopping and to kill the bacteria with the chemicals here. So one unique feature is you press this button. Exiting home. Please keep the space clear. The little back will actually go out and what you actually do is if you want to do vacuuming, you swap out with this module. This has a suction only port and two side brushes. You can see you can actually swap out the mopping pads as well just by removing them. So unfortunately the Narwhal T10 can't vacuum mop simultaneously. You do have to physically swap out the two uh, modules. The Yeti Mop Station and the Vinibot H10 can simultaneously mop and vacuum at the same time. And they both have a spinning extractor bar, which I actually appreciate. This makes it a true vacuum cleaner instead of just a section only port. And as you can see, the Yeti Mop Station does have an active carpet avoidance sensor. So not only does it boost suction while going carpet, it also can actively avoid carpet when mopping. This is something that the Ecofax has as well. So just to let you know, Ecofax and Yeti do share the same components, they're like a parent company, so you'll expect the same sensors. So all three who are vacuum slash mop have the same app features like live mapping. You also got room select, area select. Also you can change the water flow, the vacuum levels, and they all have an air drying mode which dry the mopping pad, but the Vinibot H10 takes it a step further. Since the Nara and Vinibot has a lot of navigation, they can create a map in one cleaning session, Whereas the Yeti takes about 3 cleaning runs to create a full map. Now once you have mapped out the floor plan using the H10, you can see you can create areas and tell the robot vacuum to mop that area, or you can tell it to vacuum that area, or you can do both simultaneously, which is a cool feature. Let me show you this. So as you can see in the back there, I just have mopping only, but you also have the option to do vacuum and mopping as well. I do recommend standard power if you're just doing hardware floors, but you do have the option to go on max power. So maybe on carpeting, you might want to go on max power. For example, this bathroom rug off to the right there, or maybe you just want to change out the power levels. It's up to you. 
Um, one unique feature is that lifting mopping system, which I showed earlier in this video. It really makes it helpful when going over like thicker rugs, like this bathroom mat. It doesn't have problems scraping it like I tried on the Roblox S7. It really is able to get over it and make sure it doesn't drag the wet mopping system. Having the ability to automatically lift up this mopping pad really makes it a true two-in-one for a vacuum slash mop. So for example, on the Narwhal, you do have to physically swap out the two modules. And for the Yeti, you do have to physically take out the mopping pads just because it has that active carpet avoidance sensor and there's no way to bypass it. It will not go onto carpet with the mopping pads installed. So you do have to physically remove it. Okay, let's quickly take a look at the back here. There's some other robots like the S9, the i7, and they're both self-emptying robots. But you notice the old style docking station on the N1. Now they really drastically changed it and that's the big changes with the H10. Let's go and take a look at it. One of the biggest changes to the docking station is the inclusion of a color display with three different buttons allowing you to go through the menus and change different settings, which is pretty cool. And I will let you know what these settings are once I figure it out. So basically the new redesigned docking station is sleeker, it allows it to sit more flush to the wall and it looks better in the home. And it provides the same principles where you have a fresh water tank, dirty water tank. Also there's a third tank which allows you to add liquid detergent to the water. So and it's pretty easy to fill up and the tanks I think are a little bit smaller than the other two models I'm showing casing. Okay, if I were to reorganize the three models from the simplest to the most complex, I would say that the Yeti mop station is the simplest, whereas the Vinnybot H10 is the most complex, allowing you the most features in the app and also on the docking station. Now, what unique features the Vinnybot H10 doesn't have any physical agitation, so there's no vibrating mopping system or no counter-rotating mopping pads like on the mop station and the narwhal. So once the Vinnybot H10 is done, it go back to docking station. And unlike spinning the bopping pads, it actually has a wiper in the back of its docking station. And it will actually wipe off the dirt debris and spray some water down. It's a very unique feature and you can see the differences there. So for example, the Yeti mop station, you have a self-washing feature. You have the play pause. So when you press that, it will actually go back to its last cleaning job. And lastly, you can tell the robot back into go back home. So if you like these types of videos, please give me a big old thumbs up. It really helps me out, helps out my channel. Also, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot a comment down below. I'll be more than happy to help choose the right little vacuum or mopping system for you. So let's go ahead and wrap up this video. I'll give you my final thoughts on the three models. Uh, this was just uh, like an overview or just some of the features that these models have. Okay, let's go ahead and give you my final thoughts on the three models. I think all three models did a pretty good job vacuuming and mopping and they were able to effectively navigate my home without any issues. They can go back to the docking station to charge up and to also wash their mopping pads. Now, hopefully down in the future, we have both the self-washing and self-emptying. I think that's something that they can combine into one unit. So after testing the three models, I think they're good, but they're not the best out there, especially if you just want a vacuum slash mopping robot. You could take a look at like the Roblox S7, the S5 Max, even like the 360 S9, which offer a pretty good option. Now, if you really want the self-washing feature, there's not a lot of options out there. There's only five that I can currently name, but out of the three, I think the price, the feature limitations, and the availability is really kind of what holds them back. They're still fairly new. For example, the Yeti Mop Station is not currently available for the public, and for the Nawa T10, it's very expensive, close to $1,000. And finally, if you look at the Vinnybot N1, the last generation, you have to get to a third party site and for the new generation, I don't know where to buy it. So hope you have a great rest of the day. I'll catch you next time. See ya.